I know this is not the usual intro you guys are used to, but I got a comment on my on the community post I put up that can I do a story on how to make a five by five closure and how to make the hairline look very natural. So this is just dedicated to you that ask that question. I feel like I'll leave the I shall sha leave how the video the question was asked there. So and I was about making a Shasha, what I'm making is a 5x5, five five, but a 4x5, five but it's basically almost the same process, it's a similar process, so this video is dedicated to you, so if you're watching this, leave a comment down in the comment section. So hi guys, this tutorial is basically the second part in the series of how to ventilate. The first part was how to cut the lace, so if you're curious on that, you can go and check the video out, I'll have it linked up there. But this part is basically the how to make the body of a 5x5 five five closure. So if you don't know, making a 5x5 five five closure and making any size of closure is basically almost the same pattern the only difference has to basically do with the front of the closure so the first part on how to make a five by five closure is getting the base right so if you don't know what the base is a base is the back of the closure that's those hairs that are ventilated towards the back that is used to cover the weft there so a base is the back of the closure so the thing with the base is that all the strands in the base are ventilated towards the back and the base is really very dense dense meaning very very thick just because it's the main purpose of a base is to cover the back of the closure the shape of a base it's a shape the base basically has like four cardinal points if you can see there i use the chalk to clearly mark the four points so you're ventilating it in like a diagonal manner a straight line and a diagonal manner and that is the same pattern you're going to be following from the beginning of the base down to the end of the base at this point, I zoomed in for you guys to see what I mean by when I say ventilating in a diagonal manner. A diagonal manner basically just means this type of slant line here. You're going to, going to be ventilating it line by line, line by line in a slant manner. By the time you're ventilating it this way, you're going to get that diagonal pattern shape that I was talking about. And this one, you it, it doesn't really matter. You're just, it has like, you're following exactly the line that has been given there. It's not like you're forming your own line or anything. So, getting the diagonal line should actually not be a problem mind you whether diagonal or not you're still ventilating towards the back if you make a mistake of ventilating towards the side it's not really going to give that coverage of the base that you will need so whether you're ventilating diagonal or straight line you're still going to ventilate it towards the back i know you may be confused on what it i mean by a straight line pattern but i'll explain that later but basically the first pattern you're going to be noting is the diagonal pattern which is this first side so if you look at that thing when you're ventilating, you realize that there's no particular horizontal line. There's no definite horizontal line for you to say, okay, this is how the line is supposed to be. So for you to get the illusion of an horizontal or a straight line, you have to ventilate up, down, up, down. Just look at it when I'm talking, you understand better. You're ventilating up, down, up, down. That way it's going to give kind of like an illusion that, okay, yes, it is in a straight line. Then once you're done with that side, you're doing it for the both sides. And when you're done, you get something like this. Then the ending side, you're also going to do that diagonal that I spoke about. So you're starting with diagonal, you're going with straight line pattern, then you're doing diagonal. At this point you're ignoring the center part in here first because the center part in, you're not really going to mind the center part when doing the base so basically it's just the same pattern you started with that you're going to be continuing for the whole 10 lines like i've said in previous videos some people will go 30 lines of base because they like when their pattern is short but to me i prefer 10 lines of base i feel like 10 lines of base is just a sweet spot so once you're done with the 10 lines of base now you know that okay you're done with the base and you can start your body of the closure i'm sincerely sorry for the way the um, video turned out and the way my face was showing and stuff i honestly didn't know it was this bad until this but i promise it gets better as the video goes on no one is going to persecute you if the lines the baselines are not up to 10. so some people end up stopping at seven or eight or basically when they've gotten the required coverage for the back of the head that they please so if you can stop at seven if you can stop at, if you can even stop at five maybe the hair has covered the back of the closure has covered very well saying so do what um do what rocks your boat sha sha but me most times i just end up going to the 10 lines but once you're done with the 10 lines of base following the exact same pattern of diagonal straight line and diagonal you're going to get like a full coverage of the back of the closure and i'm going to show you what that means this right here is how i said a full coverage of the back so once i'm done with the base the base is 10 lines of base let me explain something when i say 10 lines of base someone asked why can't you make it 20 or 30 lines of base 10 lines of base go to somewhere here 
If you're doing a 20 line base or a 30 line base, it's going to get you somewhere here. Do you understand? And this is make the pattern short. Yeah, I don't like short patterns. I prefer when the pattern is very long and visible, kind of. So I just opt for 10 lines on this. Some people's pattern, most factories patterns, they go as far as 30 lines on base, 20 lines on base. The base is basically the head that is ventilated towards the back to cover the, the bundles at the back. Do you understand? So some people go as much as 20 lines of base, 30 lines of base, but to me, 10 lines of base is perfect for me. So, hi guys, this closure ventilation video is not going as planned. It's honestly not going as planned. I've been ventilating a lot more than I've been filming, but I came here to explain something. So if you've watched my previous video, I'll link that video below, where I was teaching you guys how to make a 2x4 closure. You realize that what's making a 2x4 closure and making a 5x5 closure, it's kind of the same. Because making a 2x4 closure and making any kind of closure is kind of the same. The only difference is that for this other kind of closures, the front has a frontal effect too. So you have to leave a space in front for the frontal effect. So apart from that, it's kind of the same. So I just want to explain where I've got into the closure. Before I start filming again, so you guys understand what I've been doing. I filmed up until where I did the base. The base is usually to cover the back. That's weft. This base is like this and like this. I filmed up until where I did the base. How this side is, is how the base is. I don't know if you understand. But how this side is, is how the base is. I filmed up until where I did the base. Then, I'm going to start filming when I'm doing this side. The exact same thing you did to one side, the exact same thing you do to the other. After which you start doing your diagonal pattern. So this diagonal pattern, since it's like a center pattern I'm doing, to this side is going like this. Do you understand? To this side is now going like this. So it's all going like this and like this, like this and like this, like this and like this, until it gets to the end. Then I have to mark some somewhere that I'll start my frontal effect. Because this is not a five by five closure, this is a four by five closure. A four by five closure is like a sweet spot between a four by four closure that has a short pattern and a five by five closure. Especially when the hair is not enough. Most times I just advise the person to go for a four by five. It still gives the frontal effect, it still gives what you want, it's just not as wide as a five by five. Do you understand? Sorry, they are doing construction at the back. Ignore the sound. But basically, that is what I've done up until here. I've done my 10 lines of base. I think I filmed that. I think I filmed maybe. I think I filmed maybe when I was doing one line of base or two lines of base or so. But basically, what I was doing there is what you do up until you get your 10 lines. When you get your 10 lines, what you start is your diagonal pattern. So from here now, I'm going to start the diagonal pattern at this side to show you guys what I meant when I say you start your diagonal pattern down there. But I've been able to explain how I got to this point. And now I'm on the body of the closure. For the body of the closure, when you have two sides, you have this side to this side and this side to this side. So I've been doing one side since. So let me start this other side. So I'm going to show you how that works. And I'll still ventilate this side to still show you what I've been doing there since. But let's go. Like I explained earlier, exactly what you're doing to the left hand side is what you're doing to the right hand side. I was not able to record when I was ventilating the right hand side, but I'm showing you guys how I was able to do the left hand side so you get what I did in the other hand. So basically, when you're done with the base, you're going to start the body of the closure, the main, the main. When you're doing the body of the closure, there's something they do that they call one line spacing, in which you ventilate one line, you leave another line, you leave that, the next line um, open, then you ventilate the other line. Do you get what I'm trying to say? you ventilate one line you leave the next line open and the next line from begin to end if you see what i'm ventilating you see that that next line has a whole space before this one i'm ventilating that's exactly what this whole one line spacing is about and you're ventilating it in a diagonal pattern at this point you're trying to do it to cover up the straight line pattern so by the time you do your first three to four lines it's not going to get to the center pattern like if you see where this one stops now can you guys see where it stopped it's if the center pattern starts where the other where this other hair ended that's where the center pattern is supposed to start but if you guys can see it did not the center pattern the, the, the other line did not stop there and that's how it's going to continue going breaking 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 until it gets to the center pattern after which it continues
as you can see from this line it had already started to get to the center pattern the center pattern basically starts where this other hair ends do you get what i'm trying to say so basically i still coming to get into the center pattern and this is where the center pattern begins to form so yeah you have to be very intentional about how wide or narrow you want your pattern to be if you want your pattern to be wide then you make the space be plenty maybe you leave two spaces but if you want your pattern to be small you just leave maybe just one line and stuff but basically that's just how you're going to be doing this side and it's just this exact same pattern going to be doing the left hand side that you're going to be doing to the right hand side in essence the body of a closure you're basically just doing one line spacing the diagonal pattern diagonal basically is just this slant line so you're doing one line spacing with the diagonal pattern you're doing it for both the left hand side and the right hand side now how the diagonal line and pattern is going to be facing now how the line is going to be facing it now solely depends on what part of the closure it is if it's on the left hand side it's going to face that way if it's on the right hand side it's going to face that way and that way you're going to be ventilating all your hairs towards that direction i feel like i'll teach directioning of hairs in a separate video if you know you're going to be interested in that please just leave a comment down in the comment section but now just know that the full body of the closure i told you this base this body this con this ending for the base you're ventilating your hairs towards the back for the body you're ventilating your hairs towards the side then for the ending you're going to ventilate your hair towards the back when i get to the end i'll explain the ending better but now we are still on the body and by the time you're doing your you follow through it what i've explained you're going to get to this point this point is still the point where this is the same pattern you're going to follow through when you're making your two by four closure and basically any type of closure it's not at this point that i'll not teach you the difference between what is obtainable for a two by four closure and what is obtainable for in front out closure such as four by four four by five and the rest of them This isn't a story about nothing, but see the problem with this double split knotting that I was using for this particular closure. Are you seeing how initially the strands will look scattered? The strands will look so scattered and just look like they are going in two different directions. But once me and um, basically once you use wax stick and hot comb, it has a way of slipping and just giving it a particular direction but basically this still may continue with the diagonal pattern up until here from here i was already reaching the closing the closing like i said is like the front side of the closure so i was already getting to the closing and i'm going to teach you guys how to close a closure briefly here yeah, but i feel like i won't be able to teach everything i want to teach here so if you're interested i can drop a full video on that i know i've promised a lot of videos at this point but sha sha i can drop you a full video on that if you're interested So basically, a closure is divided into three parts. The body, the base, the body, and the ending. Do you understand? The base, the body, and the ending. The front. The front is where you now have the frontal effect if you're doing the frontal effect, and then the closing alone if you're doing just closing. For normal short closures, you're doing just closing. It's closing. But for wide closures, you're doing frontal effect. In front. When you get to the front of the closure here, yeah, you have to be very careful just so you will not encroach into the area that is meant for the frontal effect. So basically, what I do is I just basically remark them, redo the markings, and make the markings a little bit bolder so I will understand what I'm doing. I've earlier showed you guys how to mark in the previous video. If you've not watched that video, I'll have it linked below. But basically, this is a 4 by 5 closure so and it has a frontal effect so i'm going to be leaving a 1.2 inch allowance in front if you guys can see that box in front that i'm measuring here that's a 1.2 inch allowance that i'm leaving that's a 1.2 inch space i'm leaving for the frontal effect so once i've measured that pattern i'm sure see it i've measured it and it's a 1.2 space once i'm sure that it's up to that 1.2 inches i'm still okay so where this one stops now that's the other side that is not marked once it stops then i know that okay that's where i'm going to be closing the closure and closing the closure you're not encroaching in the 1.2 inch space for the frontal effect you're just closing the closure like that this you, can you guys understand what i've been explaining since now after you mark out that 1.2 inch allowance that you're going to be doing for the frontal effect then you're going to close the closure basically closing the closure just me basically means covering the pattern that you've been doing for a while you know we've been doing one line spacing throughout the body of the closure and a good closure you're not supposed to know the pattern as first, first glance 
a strange person who is not familiar with ventilation should not see the pattern of your closure and immediately pick out that this is the pattern you're doing in the closure. So to prevent that, you have to close the closure. Closing the closure just basically entails using um, a straight line pattern. Basically, you're ventilating hairs in a horizontal manner and just in a straight line just to cover up that place because if you allow this one line spacing to extend without closing it you will see that the one line space will just become very noticeable and that's going to be a very tacky walk so when you're closing the closure you're just ventilating in a straight line pattern mind you you're still going to observe that one line space that i spoke earlier about so you're still going to observe the one line spacing you're not going to ventilate in a straight line pattern then when you see that you can continue with the one line spacing you continue if you cannot continue the one line spacing, you just ventilate in your straight line pattern. The way you see, you can continue the one line spacing, you can you continue. I did like a paper illustration. I don't know if you watched my previous videos where I actually do paper illustrations for you to understand better. So, if you know that's something you're going to be interested in watching, then I can actually drop the video because I did that one quite a while ago. But basically, that's what closure making I and mean, close closing of a closure entails. You're just putting this trance in a straight line pattern. Once you see that, okay. This strand is going to, if I'm putting this strand here, it's going to look, it's not going to form the straight line. You're not going to put the strand there. Once that, okay, this strand I'm putting here, it can actually form a straight line. Then you put the strand there. Then once you see that, okay, yes, it can actually form the one line spacing. Because you are still doing the one line spacing despite the fact that you're doing the closing. But that um, straight line pattern you're doing at the ending, gone, gone. That line that you marked as the ending of the um, closing of the closure when you're doing a straight line pattern there then that straight line pattern is to cover the pattern that straight line pattern is to cover the um, one line spacing pattern you've been doing since if you guys understand what i'm saying but that straight line pattern is cover the one line spacing pattern you've been doing since and then when you see that okay you can continue the one line spacing like this one i'm doing here if you guys can look closely you'll see that i continue the one line spacing there then the ones that cannot continue the one line spacing, i'm just going to leave it blank do my straight line pattern then if you can continue the one line spacing you continue because mind you the one line spacing is what forms the pattern and makes the pattern as good as the pattern you usually look so you have to still be very vigilant about it if you don't understand anything just start dropping your questions down there but so when you're done closing the two sides of the closure you're going to have something like this please ignore the fact that one side of my closing is jumping and the other side is not jumping that's the mistake that i made and if i was um, going to just do the closing i would have adjusted the closing the mistake but based on i was doing the frontal effect i'll cover it i just said to go here i'm remeasuring the frontal effect mind is a four by five closure i'm doing so you have to keep on measuring to extend. make sure that you do not extend more than that five oh, that length five because you're not that generous to ventilate extra for client oh. so now what when you get to this frontal effect but i want you guys to be very watchful about this i divide the 1.2 inches into three parts i divide the 1.2 inches into three parts that's 0 0.4 inches in one 0 0.4 inches in one and 0 0.4 inches in one so now what i usually do is that the one that is closest to the closing that's the first part i usually use two to three strands what i mean by two to three strands that i'm picking two strands when i'm ventilating or i'm picking three strands when ventilating three strands are, bit, are like three three hair when ventilating that way you know that is like the mid it's sort of like your hairline this is your hairline so you have to make it look very natural but it's the inside inside of your hairline you know as your hairline becomes forward the density reduces that it starts to become lighter it's no longer be as thick as it usually would be so as you're going forward you're making it lighter and lighter so the first side i used to do ventilation two is to three and this is the first idea that I'm doing ventilation 2 is to 3. What makes this a frontal effect, you might ask? Why is it called a frontal effect? Well, this is exactly the pattern that they use for the, a, a, the front of a frontal, but slightly different. But this is basically almost the same pattern they use for the front of a frontal. But then what's the pattern you're talking about? The pattern is no pattern. <laughs> they call this pattern disorganized pattern. You don't have, you're putting the strand anywhere you like. Anywhere the spirit leads, you put it. If you start putting it in definite places, I think starts to have a pattern. It's no longer a pattern. You have to put it scattered, disorganized in any way you like. But just have it in mind that any strand you're ventilating, you're ventilating it to the back. That's what I said that time. You're the base you're ventilating to the back, the body to the side, the front, the front, that's the frontal effect to the back. That way, it gives that kind of frontal effects vibe it gives the illusion of like a front out you get so any strand you're ventilating towards this front you're ventilating to the back 
Remember when I said you're dividing the front the 1.2 inch allowance you get for the frontal effect into three parts, and the first part you're doing two to three strands. This second part now you're doing one to two strands, meaning you can pick one strand, you can pick two strands. You guys know that this pin has different um, strands and um, these numbers, right? They have two to three, they have three to four, and that's besides the point. So you can be switching up your pin, or you can just opt to use three to three pin. I use it for everything but basically this second side now you're picking one is to two strands meaning you can pick one strand you can pick two strands you know this is already going forward it's going it's already going towards your hairline and it's already becoming less dense it's coming it's already becoming quite scanty so you also have to illustrate that in your closure if the person you're making the closure for look at the person's hairline to know that okay this person really does not have a full hairline and you're trying to imitate the person's hairline so make this middle side kind of scanty not so scanty that they will be seeing the pattern of the closing but just scanty enough that can cover it up but can also give the illusion of a frontal effect you get Now this is the final side and this is the hairline itself. Like this is the final hairline gong gong. And remember I said the hairline is supposed to be as natural as possible. So here yeah, now you're using one strand alone. One strand alone. I'm emphasizing it because that one strand alone it has a way of making the this thing look very light and giving it the illusion of a scanty front and um, this thing. It's scanty hairline that is not dense. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Sha sha, you're picking just one strand and you're going to just put it in the holes just in, enough to make sure that it's very scanty. It's scanty. You're not going to make it very scanty because if you make it very scanty, it's going to be obvious and it's going to sha look very bold. So you have to find a thin line between making it look full enough to not look bald and making it scanty enough to look like a hairline you understand it may seem scattered here as i was ventilating it but basically me i don't really follow up with the pattern because i'm already used to it i just sometimes i can do the the three at the same time i just know i'm putting two strands one strand and one to two and one strand like that so i just ventilate it scattered and most of what i usually do is that i'm ventilating it i'm styling it you get so if i ventilate a little and i'm wondering is it enough what i'll do is that i will style the front i'll put wax, wax stick and hot comb and style it if i see that ah it's not this thing enough or it's not flat enough i be it's not full enough then i'll apply i'll put more and that's just basically how i do it you guys to note something there's no perfect or, or right and wrong way to do this hairline basically what i do is i'll refill it and sometimes i can wig the hair already then i realize that oh the hairline is not full enough and i just refill it a little it's not bad and it's totally acceptable but one thing you need to note is that you're going to be sewing wefts as close to the beginning of the ventilation as you're going to sew wefts on top of the closure so you have to the way you ventilated um base to the back to cover those bundles at the, the wefts at the back you have to also ventilate to the side to cover the wefts at the side i forgot to do that here but basically i had to now go back and redo like four thick lines of ventilation to the side to cover the wefts that is going to be sewn at the two sides and once you do that you're going to have like a very clean looking closure without wefts that are showing that's a mistake that i've actually been making and i just i was basically able to correct myself when i figured that out so you're going to be ventilating bases also to the two sides thick like four or five lines of base if not more just to cover up those wefts that is going to be showing because if it's showing it's going to look very funny believe me sha sha that's basically what it has to do with the hair line so when you're done with the closure you're going to get something like this like i said earlier you can still refill it when you wig the hair if you find out that it's still looking very scanty this is how the front of the closure was looking when it wasn't on a block head and then this is how the back of the closure is looking i see how neat it's looking mind you i was supposed to stitch the edges of the closure but i didn't do that but it's fine it's understandable but Sha sha, this is basically the finished work of all the many days of stress. So, and this was when I finally wigged it, and this was when I styled it. You can style this four by five closure as a C part, center pattern, zigzag pattern, basically any style you want, and it still gives. Can you guys see the hairline? Are you seeing how scanty the front of the hairline is looking? 
so thanks a lot for watching this video i do hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in my next one bye bye